Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the chlorination of butane, uh, and we're going to practice drawing all of the possible monochloro products. Uh, <clears throat> in the previous video, I was on radical halogenation. We talked about simple compounds that uh, are only have one kind of hydrogen on them. So butane has a couple of different types of hydrogens, primary and secondary, and there are different possible products that could form depending on whether uh, chlorine substitutes out any particular one of them. Uh, one approach to, uh, to solving this problem might actually involve taking some effort to draw all of the, draw in all of the hydrogen atoms. Take me a little bit of time, so, so hang out with me. So here are all the hydrogen atoms on butane. So we have primary, secondary, secondary, primary. And then I'm going to do something, and just hang with me for a moment. I'm going to put the secondary hydrogens on the appropriate kind of wedges. Not that these things are chirality centers, but... It, some of them are coming towards us and some of them are going away from us and that's actually going to be important later on. All right. And then as far, as far as determining all of the possible monochloro products, you could systematically go through and swap out any one of these hydrogens for another or I'm sorry, any one of these hydrogens for chlorine, not a vanadium, chlorine. And so I have gone through and swapped out uh, each of these three hydrogens on, on the end of this chain with a chlorine. And if we were to go and name each of these compounds, we would actually come up uh, and, and you may have suspected this was going to happen. This is all of these are one chlorobutane. They're actually the same compound, uh, and, and it looks busy, of course, because of all of the hydrogens. But actually, swapping any of the three hydrogens on the methyl group at the left end of the chain produce the same compound. These three hydrogens are chemically equivalent. If you've studied NMR spectroscopy, you might be familiar with that idea of chemical equivalence. Uh, but chemical equivalence occurs when hydrogens or, or groups or whatever are chemically indistinguishable from each other. A reaction at one spot produces the exact same product as a reaction at the other. And so any of these CH3s will, can react and, and be substituted with a chlorine and still produce one chlorobutane. And so for that position, I only need to draw one product, and I'm going to simplify it and not show any of the other hydrogens. Yeah. <clears throat> now, if we move on to the next position, and the second carbon in on the chain, uh, I'm only going to draw in the hydrogens at that position so that it, we're not quite as busy one solid and one dashed. And we could substitute for one of those for chlorine, or we could substitute the other one for chlorine. So now I ask you, are these the same compound? Actually, they're not. Um, The one on the top is R2-chlorobutane, and the one on the bottom is S2-chlorobutane. <clears throat> so these are enantiomers of each other. We formed an enantiomer pair. Right. If we move on to the third position uh, on butane, and again, I'm only going to draw those hydrogens there at the third position, um, because I'm at the moment, interested in clarity. And I can draw two structures. 
and I've lost the hydrogen up here. Okay, so I can draw two structures, and again, you can look at those and say, wait a minute, those are enantiomers of each other. Now, it actually happens that again, the one on the top is R2-chlorobutane, and the one on the bottom is S2-chlorobutane. Um, and so substituting at position three actually generates the same products as substituting at position two. These are not new uh, compounds. So I'm gonna get rid of those. And then if we substitute at position four, there are three hydrogens here and they are all chemically equivalent. So I'm only gonna draw one of those products, but that product is actually something we already have one chlorobutane. So there are in fact uh, only three possible compounds. And if we don't count stereochemistry, there are only two places you can substitute to get two different constitutions, one chlorobutane and two chlorobutane from the one in the two spot. The three and the four, uh, this molecule is symmetric. So whatever happens at two, you get the same outcome at three. Whatever happens at four, you get the same outcome as you did at one. In the next video, I'm going to do isooctane, which is a more complicated molecule, but some of the same principles we just applied here uh, can help us figure out what the products of that monochlorination are. Thank you for watching.